Genesis chapter number 13 tonight. Uh, Genesis chapter number 13. If you got it, say amen. Uh, let's look at verse number 4. Unto the place of the altar, which he had made there at first, and there Abram called on the name of the Lord. Abram is going out, and Lot is also following him. Verse number 5, And Lot also, which went with Abram, had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them, that they dwell, may dwell, might dwell together. For their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. Notice this here. And there was a strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle. And the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelled then in the land. And notice the fight wasn't between Abram and Lot. God showed me that this afternoon. The fight wasn't between Abram and Lot. The fight was between some of their people. And Abram said unto Lot, Let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdmen and thy herdmen. I like this phrase right here. This will preach all by itself. For we be brethren. It's not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou wilt take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan, that it was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Now notice this is what he compared Sodom and Gomorrah to, the land of Jordan right there. Even as the garden of the Lord, it looked beautiful. There was no other place like it. Like the land of Egypt, as thou comest unto Zor, then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves the one from the other. Abram dwelt in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelt in the cities of the plain. Notice this next phrase here, we'll pray. And pitched his tent toward Sodom. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, I've had no doubt, God, on the way up here for several weeks now, Lord, you have placed this word in my heart for tonight. And Lord, if I don't get another opportunity this weekend, Lord, I know without a shadow of a doubt, Lord, this is for maybe, Lord, me to remind me, but Lord, you've given me a stern warning for somebody here tonight. God, I pray you'll help us. God, help us, Lord, to always, Lord, in every area of our life, God, always put you in mind first. Lord, don't put our selfish wheels in front of you. And God, help us to keep our minds and our hearts focused on the things of God. Lord, I have holy righteous fear tonight, God, for somebody here under the sound of my voice. Lord, it's not me preaching, God. I want you to do it. And Lord, if anything gets accomplished, it'll be 0% man, 100% God. And the church said, Amen. We find by way of introduction, Lot and Abraham. Lot and Abraham has now come to a place where they can't get along. And may I say that right there in verse number 8, if anybody ought to get along, it should be the people of God. But I do understand, and uh, man, being in church my whole life, I understand, and you know this, there's some knotheads along the way. There's some people uh, who you just can't get along with. And here we have a family that, man, was, was journeying together and now there's problems come up in their life. Let me say this by way of introduction. Verse number 9, Abram come to Lot and said, Hey, it's not the whole land before thee. Separate thyself, I pray thee, from me. If thou will take the left hand, then I will go to the right. Or if thou depart to the right hand, then I will go to the left. There's a decision to be made. There's a decision to be made for Lot. Lot has the uh, man, it's, the ball is in his court. Lot, brother John, has a decision to go to the left hand, or do, Lot has a decision, preacher, to go to the right hand. Yeah. It's Lot's decision. Abraham is not going to make the decision for Lot. Lot is about to choose his own destiny. Let me say this before I go any farther. We make our choices. And we, we get to the end of our choices. It's nobody's fault to blame but our own. Being a youth pastor for almost three years, I've learned a lot of things how 
kids and uh, they like to blame it on their mom and blame it on the dad. At the end of the day, the choices you make, you realize that you made the choice you made. Lot is about to get himself in a dire, nasty mess. Lot is about not only mess his life up, his daughter's life up. There's so many people's lives at stake. And the decision that he has to make is going to affect his whole family. You know what I find in life when people make mistakes and they want to sin and do wrong preaching? You know what I find? They are so selfish and they don't understand there's other people involved. There's when kids go out and mess their lives up. Their mama's at stake. Their daddy's at stake. You're here at Emmanuel Baptist Church. The decisions you make affect Emmanuel Baptist Church. Sir, the decisions you make is going to affect your family. Ma'am, the certain the decisions you make, they are going to affect your life, whether good or whether bad. Lot has a decision to make. One man said this this afternoon. I love this. I wrote this down. Good intentions don't make up for right actions. Good intentions don't make up for right actions. Well, I meant well. Well, I, I, I didn't mean to do this. Let me say this. You make the decision, you've got to accept the consequence. Lot, man, before he ever gets to Sodom, he chose to go there. Let me say this. Not only was it a decision to make, Verse number 10, And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan that it was well watered everywhere. Before the Lord destroyed God, Sodom and Gomorrah, man, do you picture it? They're out there in the, in the, man, in the field and, and man, there's, there's stuff going on. And man, there's this lush, beautiful green grass. Man, it's beautiful out there. Man, it, let me say this, the devil is really good about making sin look beautiful. Well, just try this over here just one time. It's not going to hurt you at all. Just try a little of this one time. Just get on that cell phone one time and look this up. I know everybody in here is guilt-free tonight, but this is what God has placed in my heart. It's just one time. It's, it's really not going to hurt much. It's the mom and daddy, it's not really going to hurt too much in that marriage. It's not going to affect kids. It's just one with the, with the people at work. It's, it's just a little cuss word here at work. It's just a little this right now. And may I say this, he, he made the decision in his mind that he was going to Sodom and Gomorrah without no return. You say, preacher, why? Look with me there in verse number 12. And pitched his tent toward Sodom. He literally, I believe with all my heart, that he literally, Brother Jordan, got his tent door and every day he turned it right to Sodom and Gomorrah. And from morning he'd wake up, preacher, he'd look out and say, man, what a beautiful place. Man, that's where I want to go. Let me say this, ladies and gentlemen, before you ever go out and sin, before you ever step off into the dark depths of the sin, there's always a decision to be made. Kids don't just run off overnight. It's piling in their mind. It's piling in the heart. Seeing, man, it gets in your mind. And honey, if you don't deal with it in your mind, it'll affect your heart. And once it reaches your heart, it reaches your hands. May I say, well, I'm talking to some scarred people tonight that know what the effects of sin is. You know, man, you know you shouldn't have done that a long time ago. And now you go to bed every night with things in your mind and things in your heart that haunts you and you can't get it out. It's all based on a decision that you made in your life. He focused all his attention to Sodom and Gomorrah. There's a direction he marked. Every day he woke up, he said, man, I got to get over there. Every morning, every afternoon, every night, he would look over there and say, man, I just got to get over there. Let me say this right here. He never intended for it to be as bad as it was. Let me say this. He didn't know, man, that Sodom and Gomorrah was, was so wicked. The only thing he saw was, man, this is going to help me. This is going to help my family. Let me say this right here. I've seen some daddies make some crazy sinful decisions because it looks good at the moment. That job, that new job, man, it looks really, really good right now. But the devil's setting you up, sir, for failure. One of the most powerful things you said a while ago is that telephone. 
the devil says hey man let, let me see what's up and let me say we would be slap embarrassed tonight if we could let down a screen and take our history browser off our web and pop it on the screen let me say this it all starts with a decision made by yourself I'm sad to say this there's four teenage girls preacher on their Bessie Road I was under the ministry man I still talk to them I still pray with them they call me those kids still call me four young ladies under the age of 16 years old have given birth to a child I'd get up there and Mr. Ellis and I'd preach my guts out saying hey young lady you better not put yourself in that man you better not go that direction you better stay far Miss Kathy stay far away from that you better not get yourself in sin and preach I know you preach on it till you're blue in the face and hey don't put yourself in dark places don't get yourself in those situations at the parties I know this ain't popular but good lord this thing's on my heart somebody in the night you're in trouble you're about to make a decision that's going to affect you for the rest of your life he pitched his tid in other words his desire was based on sight 2 Corinthians 5 verse number 7 for we walk by faith not by sight and not only did he base his decision on sight he debased his decision on selflessness you know what Lot said that's what I want and that's what I'm going after I'm afraid there are many kids at Victory, I know for a fact, that are out in sin tonight. They left the things of God. I know they're saved. Preacher, brother, man, they, they almost said his name. There's a boy used to come up here and was almost called to preach. A man make a pray heaven down. Had the Spirit of God all over him. But it was just one time at this party. It was just one time. It's, this one time's not going to hurt me. Ladies and gentlemen, I am scarred tonight in my mind because of one time I've done some things in my life. I'm going to live forever and go to the grave with things I've done, Brother James, because it was one time yeah. let me say this the devil only needs one opportunity not going to ask for a raise of hands tonight but I promise you from the smallest to the greatest we will all lift up our hands spiritually and say hey I live with regret tonight because of one opportunity the more I see young people the more I see mamas and daddies Man, just tore up from the floor up because sin has wrapped their mind. Sin has got you say, well, I'm over that. I make good decisions, sir. Ma'am, let me say this. If God can, man, man, get the vilest of people in life. Listen, here's Lot. Lot's walking right beside Abraham. Let me say this. Abraham is a beautiful picture of Christ. And if Lot is walking with Christ, Lot is walking with Abraham, and it's so easy to walk away, what's going to stop us from walking? Walking away from God. The decision he made, the direction he marked. Notice verse number 13. Notice this now. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Lot looked at Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, I want to go there. Lot knew, man, this place was wicked and out of hell. You know what blows my mind? People walk in, they know they're saved, and they walk in, preacher, knowing it's wrong. Knowing it's wrong. Like we got a little bug zapper at home, man, you watch them things. Man, them little bugs just walk, they go right to that lot, they get big eyed, they fly right into it, and it zaps the living lots out of them. We walk right into that. You, you sit here tonight, you're trying to cover it up. Thank, thank your wife don't know. Thank your husband don't know. My preacher don't know. I'm going to be all right. Well, let me tell you something. It's better to get it under the blood now before God himself uncovers it and you make a mess of your life. There's the destination that was miserable. Sodom is a wicked and deprived place. Let me read you this. A lot of people, for all my life, preacher, I thought that Sodom and Gomorrah was a bunch of homosexuality and stuff. God has given a big old list what's wrong with Sodom and Gomorrah. Look at this, Ezekiel chapter number 16, verse number 48 and 50. As I live, saith the Lord God, Sodom thy sister hath not died, she nor her daughters, as thou hast done, thou and thy daughters. 
Behold, this was the iniquity of thy sister Sodom. You say, Jeff, what, listen, I believe in a man and a woman marriage. Somebody say amen. That's not only the problem with Sodom. It goes a whole lot deeper. Look at this. There's pride, fullness of bread, abundance and idleness. Neither did she strengthen the hand of the poor and needy. They were haughty and committed abomination before thee. Therefore I took them away as I saw good. Here's what we like to do. We like to classify our sin. Brother James, we like to say, well, you know, I'm only doing this, but hey, you look over there now. You, whoo, they in bad shape. It blows my mind at home, preacher. A lot of people, men go out and drink and party. They, they come to, and y'all know who I'm talking about. They sit right on the front row of Victory Baptist Church, and they post that they went out drinking and partying and having themselves a good time. May I say this? That, that, that person who I'm talking about, preacher, that person's life and their family is an absolute chaotic wreck. And that, 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 that person wants, wants their children to be faithful to God. That same person that, man, diddle dabbles and see and think it's not going good has a granddaughter and a grandson that's coming on behind them. Let me say this. Honey, let me say, Mom and Daddy, if you're, you sin and you do wrong, you cannot tell your kids not to do wrong. Amen, amen, amen. Well, my daddy does it. Why can't I? My mama does it. Why can't I? The decision he had to make, there was the direction he marked. There's a destination that was miserable. The Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 23, a man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Proverbs 11 verse number 2, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. Man of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse number 18, but by much slothfulness the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands the house droppeth through. Lot is not here yet. He's got the opportunity to turn around, Miss Annette. He don't have to go there. I come tonight to tell you there is a place out there called Sodom. There's a place out there in the world, kids, and it's nested. Let me say this, the devil and all the hellions of hell, they want to demand to just kill you and destroy you and to take you girls and ruin your lives and ruin your young men's lives. That's what the world wants. But can I say what God wants? God wants you to have love. God wants you to have peace. God wants you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. Don't go to Sodom tonight. If you're almost there, let me say I'm glad God allows you turns I'm glad you don't gotta go run away from sin run away from Sodom get out of there as fast as you can run 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 how many mamas and daddies tonight preacher are living with regret if they wish I hear this all the time boy if I could brother Ellis if I could just go back over there I'd have never went down this road there's kids who I used to see go here. Now they're no longer coming. They made a decision. Maybe you're, maybe you're one of those parents that they're still serving God. May I say, don't give up hope on them. Don't give up hope. You say, preacher, they're in there. They're partying. They're having a good time. May I say, they won't forget what you've instilled in their heart. They won't forget, preacher, what you're preaching in their heart. Honey, you just keep on calling out to God. No matter how far they go, no matter how low they get, I'm glad we have a God who is faithful, a God who can come by and rescue them out of life. We don't understand the, the magnitude of the problems we cause with the decisions that we make. There's families in here tonight, I can feel it. You're suffering because somebody's in your family has made a decision and now it's costing you. It's costing you your joy. Three, man, several things. I don't find it. Sodom, God just gave me this. Number one, you won't find joy. You won't find joy down at Sodom. 
young lady, young man, the mom and dad in the world says, hey man, look at this right here. Look how beautiful this is. Man, look how pretty this is. This is so awesome. And man, he'll just get you one time. Some of you know what I'm talking about. It was just one drink. It was just one night. And man, Miss Kathy, you feel like your life is ruined. It was just one night. It was just one time. It was just one party. It was just one snort. It was just one shoot up. It was just one time. And you, you didn't mean to stay there. You didn't want to do it but just one time. And now the devil, man, is whooping your mind because of the decisions you made you're going to have to live with forever. I wonder tonight, is our destination going to cost us? Is our destination... Listen, you can come in here and hide it all you want to. Some of you won't even look at me in the face tonight. You know why? The Holy Ghost has treated you like a hound dog. And you're doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. I'm telling you, I wish I had something shouty. I wish I wish some, we could hang off some, some kind of light fixture tonight. But man, I've got to get this off my heart tonight, Brother Ellis. Some of you in here, you've been hiding things from your mama. You've been hiding, good Lord, help me right here. You've been hiding things on that telephone. You've been hiding those conversations. That little boy wants you to sneak out the house. Those little girls want you to come over for a little party. Those boys at work want you to go out and just one time, and just one time drink. May I say, lady, and gentlemen that one time is going to cost you a lifetime of misery honey don't let that one time gosh I feel the Holy Ghost in here don't let that one time cause you to go down a road you'll never be able to get back on may I say tonight you better run forest run you better drop it you better run to God don't give place to the devil hop up and go to God say preacher I I'm in things, preacher, I never thought I'd be doing. Could you imagine Lot? Could you imagine Lot? Look with me in Genesis chapter number 19. Let me say this right here. I was over there. The Holy Ghost showed me this right here. Thank God Lot had an Abraham in his life. I just park right here for a minute I'm glad in chapter number 18 we find a man by the name of Abraham he's not going on the behalf for himself to God you know what he's doing he said dear God if you don't mind my, my, my nephew Lot's down there and God if you'll just find 50 God if listen that Lot didn't care about himself but I'm glad there was somebody a ringing the prayer bells heaven for Lot hallelujah yeah. Lot, I tell you, the Holy Ghost showed me this over there, preacher. Lot and his family got saved out of that, the thing that was going to burn forever because he had an uncle that was over there touching God. You got wayward kids tonight? They're going too far. I know some faces, man. I've been up here all my life. It seems like, Brother Josh, some of your, some of your families and your kids aren't even here no more. And it seems like they're too far gone. Thank God there was Abraham. Thank God they're gone too far, preacher. They, they do all kind of crazy things. Let me say this. They know what is right. They've been told what is right. Brother Phil, no matter how far they go, I'm glad they, though we may not reach them, Brother John, I'm glad there's a big old God that knows where they are. He can go right to them and snatch them out of Sodom. Look how wicked it got for Lot. Verse number three, the angels come. Thank God for the mercy of God. Let me say, as wicked as Lot and his wife and his family had become, God still showed mercy. The angels come. Verses number one, the angels come. Meet Lot at the gate. And man, they're walking in. Verse number four. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, come past the house round, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. I don't have to go into details there. You know what exactly is going on there. Verse number 6, And Lot went out the door unto them and shut the door after them and said I pray you do brethren do not so wickedly I'll be honest with you they don't even deserve to be called brethren right there in that verse 
Verse number 8. Now, now, now think about this. Lot has made the decision to go to Sodom. Brother James, Lot has made in his mind, Brother Michael, that he is gone. The man, Brother Peter, that said that, man, I'd never do that. Well, I would never, ever, ever, never, ever do that. Look what verse number 8 says. Bold now. I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you and do you to them as is good in your eyes. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore they came under the shadow of my roof. Lot is now doing things he never thought he'd ever do. You know what happened? He's got comfortable in Sodom. I have holy fear, preacher, in my heart for people that get comfortable in sin. I have holy, holy fear for people, Brother Ellis, in my heart that can do wrong and get right, thank God, and they go right back out there and then they just forget all about God. Lot's not caring about God. Brother Ellison, preacher God, man, nobody cares about Lot. It seems like Lot's all by himself. But I believe with all my heart, I'm going to preach this all by itself one day, but there's an Abraham. Lot, you've gone too far. Maybe the herdmen of Abraham have got news. Hey, man, Lot's gone. Lot's wasted his time, Brother James. Brother Doug, man, he's, Lot's too far gone. Abraham said, man, maybe, Brother Peter, I need to get a hold of God more. No, Lot didn't care about his life, Brother Jordan. No, Lot, Brother Phil, didn't give a rip about his life. I'm glad there was somebody touching heaven on his behalf. I'm glad in my stupidity I didn't get saved. I was 16 years old. Man, I was wicked and vile just as the worst whoremonger and adulterer in the world. I was just as lost. I'm glad I had a mama and a daddy who fervently prayed for me. Kids, can I say tonight, if you got a mom and daddy that brings you to the house of God and they pray for you and they love you and you, they show you Jesus, you need to hug on them and love on them and thank God at your age. You're at a place where you don't have to go to Sodom. Lot is doing things. Brother Phil, he never thought he'd imagine. Anybody ever said this? Boy, I'd never do that. Why, well, I'd never give my daughters up. Don't ever say never. Lot is so into sin that he's willing to give his own daughters up. Miss Renee, would you come help me out? Let me close in this right here. Lot is in a place where only the hand of God can help him. I believe with all my heart, Lot has gone out of the reach of Abraham. Them men, them angels come in there and said, Lot, man, you better pack things up. And watch what happened. Man, you can read there. There in chapter number 19, Brother Johnny goes to his family and says, Hey, let's get out of here, Brother Peter, Brother Josh. Let's get out of here. You know what they did? They laughed at him. They mocked at him. Yeah. They, he has gone out of the reach of Abraham's prayer. But God was still merciful. Say, preacher, I'm, I'm doing things tonight I never thought imaginable maybe you're young and you think you got to hear from mom you think you got to hear from dad you think you got to hear from your spouse nobody will ever find out the Bible says this be sure your sin will find you out say preacher what do I do I'll tell you what the angels told Lot verse number 17 I might take off right here hallelujah and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad notice what he said here that he said he said four things escape for thy life look not behind thee neither stay thou in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed he said number one escape for thy life I believe with all my heart he told him to run from Sodom 
May I say tonight, if, if you're in a place you never thought you'd be, if you're doing things you never thought you'd do, if you're saying things you never thought you'd say, honey, can I tell you what to do? You better run as far as you can. You say, preacher, I got friends who's, who's taught me. I got friends who's bullying me to do wrong. May I say I'd cut them off as fast as I could and I'd run to Jesus. I'd run away from them. He said, not only run from Sodom, but he said this, he said, look not behind thee. I believe he said, return not to see him. Right. Luke number 19, verse 62, and Jesus saith unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. He said, neither stay thou on all the plain. In other words, he said, Lot, you're going to go through what you went through. Man, I feel God in here tonight. He said the best thing you can do, those same paths you took in, you better just keep on walking. Notice this and I'm done. Preacher, you come. He said escape to the mountain. I asked myself, Brother Josh, I said, Lot, why, why does Lot need to go to the mountain? Because Lot's in a low place. Lot's in a bad spot. Maybe you feel like you're in a low spot tonight. And may I say, sin is good for a season. Teenagers, sin is good for a little while. Shooting those things, man, sending those dirty pictures and talking that dirty talk. It appeases the flesh just for a little while. It feels good to drink one. It feels good to do this for a little season. But I promise you there are repercussions that you're going to have to face. There are the things you're going to have to come in contact with. Why did God say escape to the mountain? Because there's going to be somebody waiting on him. I'll quit. I promise I'm done right here. I promise I'm busting off like a firecracker on the inside. God and all throughout Lot's time at Sodom, not one time did God run to Lot. You know what he did? He showed mercy. Lot's down there doing wicked and God sees it. Brother Josh, Brother Doug, God sees all, knows all, sees all, hears all, he knows every thought and the intent of our heart. Can I say, uh-oh. Yeah. Yeah. The whole time, Brother Ellis God sitting there saying, man, Lot, what are you doing? Lot, I love you. Lot, I want to do big things in your life. But Lot, I'm not going to come to you. You've got to come to me. May I say, God is no respecter of persons. God's not going to force you to get right, young lady. You know what God's doing? God's at the top of the mountain. He's saying, you better run tonight. Whatever that thing is in your life, whatever that problem you're dealing with, may I say, you better run to Jesus. Don't run to mama. Don't run to daddy. Don't run to preacher. Don't run to your friends. Run to God. Run to God. Run to Jesus. He said, escape to the mountain. Maybe tonight you're in a low spot of sin. You're in a place you never thought you'd be. In this whole meeting, God has brought me here to tell you this. You don't have to stay there. Maybe you have those that's out and seeing, Mama, Dad, maybe you have those family members you've been praying for. May I say tonight, don't give up. Keep on. We're all standing, heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, we love you. I've tried my best to do your will tonight, Father. I have no doubt, God, this is what you had for tonight. God bless this invitation. Lord, I just pray tonight, God, there'll be some moms, there'll be some dads to get things right with you. Maybe they're hiding things from each other. God, get things right with each other. Maybe they need to come hug the preacher's neck saying we've been holding off the hand of God because of our sin. Lord, you're here. That's all I do know. I love you. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.